Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your holy name. We thank you for a wonderful time of praise and worship. We thank you, Father, for this day that you have made. We rejoice in our hearts and we're glad in it. Father, we thank you. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. So the message, the topic of today's message is our inexpressible joy. Hallelujah. Our inexpressible joy. As believers, the, the Bible tells us that the trials of our faith produces an inexpressible joy and reveals the glory of Jesus Christ. So I want to deal with this subject this morning of the inexpressible joy revealed in our lives. But before that, I'd like to, uh, as usual, uh, just read my uh, church's vision. And if you can read along with me, God bless you. We are a kingdom-minded church commissioned to bear witness of God's unconditional love and the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are propelled by his amazing grace, empowered by the Holy Spirit. We obey God's word and abide in his will. Every soul counts. We disciple, equip, and empower God's people to sow seeds and water seedlings and to bear everlasting fruits. We are a family with local roots and a global outlook. We worship, fellowship, and praise our soon coming King. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Now, if you would be uh, kind enough to lift your uh, word confession, your Bibles, you know, and just uh, say your word confession with me. Amen. My Bible is God's living word. My wellspring of fellowship, information, and freedom. God teaches and equips me for ministry from sunrise to sunset. His word should not depart from me. I walk in God's will and perfect love. I have the victory. So help me God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Amen. Now, let us go back to this word, the inexpressible joy in the life of believers. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the First, the first epistle of Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 7 through 9, talks about this inexpressible joy in the life of believers. Verse 7, that the genuineness of your faith, the trials of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, to praise honor, and glory at the revelation of of Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 8, whom, Jesus, whom haven't not seen you love. Though you, though now you do not see him, Jesus, yet believing, you rejoice with the joy inexpressible and full of glory. Verse 9, receiving the end of your faith, the end of your faith, the salvation for your souls. Hallelujah. So in the life of a believer, there is an inexpressible joy that cannot be expressed because of the scope, because of the depth, because of the breadth, because of the profundity of it. It is so uh, 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 vast that I want to spend some time this morning dealing with this joy that, you know, stands the test of times, above the shifts of times, ups, downs, vicissitudes, back, forth, it don't matter. It stays and it endures until its manifestation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So what else is uh, uh, there to share about this inexpressible joy in the life of a believer? Here it is, an eternal gift. The book of Revelations chapter 2 verse 7 in the NIV says, whoever has ears, let them hear what the spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to it from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Oh, hallelujah. Now, do you remember in the garden of Eden that when God had banished Adam after the fall of man, when God had banished Adam and Eve from the garden for having disobeyed and having taken of the fruit of the of good of the knowledge of good and evil that God set an angel 
a god, a guardian angel at the entrance to the garden. And we're told in the Bible that it was a flaming sword and that this flaming sword protected the way to the tree of life. That same tree of life that gives eternal life is what God promises. You begin to see how this joy is inexpressible because we're talking about an eternal gift, a gift, not something you earn, something that comes out from the goodness of God. Oh, hallelujah. So what do we do in the face of an eternal gift like this? How do we respond? We rejoice. There is joy in rejoicing. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, in rejoicing, we begin in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15, by giving thanks. Thanks be unto our God for his unspeakable gift, this inexpressible eternal gift of life, of joy, unspeakable and full of glory. We begin here in rejoicing, this joy in rejoicing, we begin first by thanksgiving. And then after we have done that, we go into rejoicing. What does it mean to rejoice? I want to deconstruct rejoicing. You see, in the Bible, it says there's no greater reason to rejoice, not according to Jesus Christ, about what should you rejoice? In Luke chapter 10, uh, verses 18 through 21, there's an account when Christ was uh, speaking to his disciples about rejoicing. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Verse 19, behold, I give you, this is Jesus, the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But here it is, verse 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this. Don't rejoice in the power. Don't rejoice in the authority. Don't rejoice in the ability to, you know, cast out demons and to have them obey you, that the spirits are subject to you. But rather, rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Hallelujah. Some of your versions will say in the Lamb's book of life, the elects of God, you know, drawn by his own power, drawn by his own knowledge, you have been chosen. Rejoice because of the choice that God has made, not because of the power that you have over the enemy. This is, you know, this is nothing compared to the unspeakable joy that awaits you. Hallelujah. And in verse 21, Jesus rejoices in the spirit. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight. So part of rejoicing at the beginning of rejoicing is always thanksgiving, giving thanks to God has stolen his virtues, has stolen his impeccable honor, his boundless joy. For you have hidden these things from the wise. So there is a revelation process that allows you to see this inexpressible joy is revealed in a relationship with Jesus Christ because it seemed good. And it is a gift lest anyone should boast. You don't work to earn it. You don't grow into it. You don't mature into it. You don't train yourself to be it. You don't discipline yourself to earn it. It is a gift from God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. So in rejoicing, there is hope. Rejoicing gives birth to a lively hope. Because they had a lively hope, we're back in the anchor scripture, which is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Folks, this lively hope is the hope of living again. This life is not all that there is. 
There is a real place called heaven. I'm going there someday. If you are saved, you're going there someday too. Now, there are many who have been deceived, who tell themselves, oh, heaven is just a, a, a literary uh, um, uh, uh, term. It's not a real place. You know, many have been deceived into thinking that it was just some kind of metaphor. You know, there is no real hell. Oh, there is a real place called heaven. Hallelujah. And that is part of the built into the rejoicing, the inexpressible joy of being a believer and the lively hope that we have. Hallelujah. You know, I want to deal with some of these inexpressible joys and more by talking about eternity. Amen. You know, brethren, we really do have a home beyond the river because of our inheritance. First Peter 1 Peter 1.4 to an inheritance which is incorruptible, you know, and undefiled, and that faded not away, but reserved in heaven for you. See, Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1, verse 23, that God is incorruptible. Our inheritance in heaven is as incorruptible as our God. That means it is not liable to corruption or decay. It is imperishable. You cannot even begin to imagine it because there is no timeline for it. You know, eternity is not waiting to begin. It already is. In eternity, there is no past, present, or future. It's, it, it just is. That is why it's incomprehensible. Because everything I'm talking about now that seems futuristic already is. We are just waiting to get there. Hallelujah. I wish I could explain and, and make this simple. Hallelujah. Now, eternal life. Our inheritance in heaven is reserved for us. This means that God personally attends to our inheritance very carefully. It means he personally takes care of our inheritance. He takes it upon himself to personally guard it on our behalf. How do we know this? John the Gospel of John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3 tells us, Jesus promised, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go now to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Hallelujah. You can take it to the bank. Eternal life is real. It is a gift. It doesn't have to be earned. You know? You don't have to uh, 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 be on the nice list or, uh, you know, uh, uh, work your way to get it. It is a gift from God. Hallelujah. But God loves you so much that the relationship you have with Christ transforms your person. You become a new creature. Your habits change. Your disposition changes. Your appetite changes. The things that you hunger for change. You begin to love on people. You begin to walk in love. You begin to carry a burden for souls. You begin to live beyond yourself. Hallelujah. I want to leave you with a final word on wages. The Bible is very clear about wages. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Here's that word again. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So God has set before you life and death. Choose wisely. Hallelujah. Now, as I wrap up, I just want to share and give you an opportunity because the promise is not given to those who are not of the way. So here is how to become a part of the way. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 in the Living Bible says, For if you tell others with your own mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and believe in your own heart that God's raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You shall be saved. 
So now I want you to pray with me. Whether you're doing this right now during this uh, broadcast or you're doing this later, the promise endures. All that is required is that you mean this prayer from the depth of your heart and that you truly repent. So let's pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life, and I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. If you said that prayer and meant it in your heart, welcome to the kingdom of God. You are born again. You are born again into this kingdom. Born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, I want to give you three quick instructions you know, because as the adversary of our souls, you know, roars, you know, uh, prowls the earth, roaring like a lion, you know, seeking who he may devour. There are three things that you must do to keep this experience secure. Hallelujah. One, talk to God every day. Christians call that prayer. Now you say, what do I talk to him about? Talk to him about everything that concerns you, everything that you care about, every care that you have. Share with him. You are created to fellowship with God. So talk to him. We call this prayer. Amen. Number two, read the Bible every day. God talks to you through his word. You know, as you begin to grow in your faith, the people that he has assigned to you will come to you with mysteries and you can read the word of God. And in, through an inductive Bible reasoning, you can get solutions and be able to speak life to situations that surrounds you and surround those who have been assigned to you. Hallelujah. Number three, join a Bible-believing church and you will grow and mature into the purpose of God's calling in your life. You're welcome to join us here at Grace Gate. We teach from the Word of God, the unadulterated Word of God, and we welcome you into our fellowship with open arms. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he lift up his divine countenance, be gracious to you, and may he let his faith shine upon you. Amen. We thank God for his word today. We thank God that we have an inexpressible joy, that we rejoice in this fact, knowing that the gift is eternal. Glory to your name, mighty God. We worship you. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah.